Hi again, Kenneth Scott Latourette in this short chapter, The Setting of the Great Recession, in, is the first chapter in his section of the book, which is about the period we call the dark, we, we used to call anyway, the Dark Ages, the first half approximately of the so-called Middle Ages. In the 8th and 9th centuries, the section of the church which had its center in Constantinople was torn by a prolonged controversy over the use of images. In the 9th century, moreover, the Muslim Arabs conquered Sicily, established strongholds in the southern parts of Italy, and took Crete. The Arab successes made the fresh, for fresh advance of Islam in territories which were traditionally Christian. In China, a severe outburst of persecution in 845 seriously weakened the small Christian communities in that empire. In spite of the disasters, the ninth, centuries was, the ninth century was also a time when in Central Europe, the Balkans, and Constantinople, the tide seemed to have turned. Notable advances of the faith were being achieved among the Slavs and Bulgars, and the patriarchal throne in Constantinople was held by Photius, outstanding as scholar and churchman. From our tantalizingly imperfect knowledge of early Christianity in India comes evidence which may indicate a growth in the 8th and 9th centuries. In the West, the upswing was beginning to be seen even in some of the darkest hours. The monastery of Cluny, both a center and a symbol of renewed life, was founded in 910. In the East, the Byzantine Empire, the leading champion of Christianity in that region, was enjoying a revival in the latter part of the ninth and in the fore part of the 10th century. The end of the recession might therefore be placed as early as 850 or 900. On the other hand, because of events which we are to see later, such as the spread of the Cluny reforms and the revival of the Roman Empire in the West under Otto I, who was crowned Roman Emperor in 962, and the beginning of the conversion of Russia, which may be dated from the baptism of Olga around 954, or better, from the baptism of her grandson, Vladimir, around 987, AD 950 seems preferable. The upswing was not sharp or sudden. By that year, it was dis distinctly noticeable in some quarters, but in others, the decline appeared to be continuing, and not yet quite to have reached its lowest point. For instance, in spite of the persecution which followed an imperial edict of 845, Christians were still reported in some of the ports of China in 877 to 878, while not far from 987, Nestorian monks sent to China to assist the church there declared that they could find no Christians in that land. In AD 950, Christianity was far less prominent in the total human scene than it had been in AD 500. In AD 500, the Roman Empire, while tottering, was still outwardly the mightiest realm on the planet, and Christianity was its professed faith. In extent and culture, the Roman Empire was then rivaled only by its chronic enemy, the Persian Empire, and by the Gupta Empire in India. Neither of these controlled as much territory, as was still nominally in the Roman domains and the Gupta dynasty was showing signs of disintegration. China was in a long period of division, civil strife, and foreign invasion. During the first five centuries of the Christian era, the expansion of Christianity was paralleled by that of Buddhism. Approximately five centuries older than Christianity, by the time of the birth of Christ, Buddhism had already spread throughout much of India and Ceylon and had penetrated into Central Asia and China. In AD 500, its geographic extent was probably wider than that of Christianity. Like Christianity, but for other causes, by AD 950, it had fallen on evil days. In India, the land of its birth, it was decadent and was in process of the absorption and elimination of Hindu, by Hinduism, which were, were to bring about the severe decline of which we have already spoken. Before AD 950, it had entered upon the slow decay in China, which it is still in progress. It was never as widely spread as was Christianity in the 7th century, or as Christianity ultimately became. In the 7th century, Christianity was represented by communities from Ireland in the west to China in the east, and from Scotland and Germany in the north 
to the Sudan and possibly South India in the south. Yet between AD 500 and AD 950, Buddhism was also spreading in Southeast Asia, the East Indies, Korea, and Japan. And in AD 950, it was probably more prominent in the total world scene than it had been in AD 500. The four and a half centuries between AD 500 and 950 also witnessed the emergence of Islam, vigorous and younger than Christianity. And by the latter of those years, Islam, after only three centuries, was almost as widely spread geographically as Christianity and was the official faith of states which were more powerful in the sense in which that term is applied to states than were any of those which were professedly Christian. During most of the period, moreover, China was ruled by the Tang Dynasty, and which, during its heyday, was, along with their Arab Empire, the mightiest realm on the planet. And Confucianism, which provided the ideological foundation of Chinese culture, was on the eve of a great revival. In AD 950, a religiously neutral world traveler, or the hypothetical visitor from Mars, might have, been, have given it as his opinion that Christianity was to share the fate of Manichaeism, which also, after an extensive geographic spread, was waning. Manichaeism, it will be recalled, was younger than Christianity, but older than Islam. Like the latter, it was indebted to Christianity, but it never had as powerful political support as that accorded Christianity through the Roman Empire or Islam through the Arabs. After a rapid expansion which carried it as far west as Carthage and as far east as the China Sea, it slowly died out, although its last remnants lingered on in China at least to the beginning of the 17th century. So it looks like it could be interpreted that Christianity is dying by about 950. But 600 years previous to this, in the days of Julian the Apostate, so-called, in the days of Julian the Apostate, the attempt was made by the emperor himself to cancel Christianity, and that failed. I've done a video about this. It is entitled Pandemic. What was the Christian response to the pandemic of the late 4th century, when Julian was alive? Even Julian himself admitted the superiority of Christianity's response to the response of paganism. See you next time.